In a country renowned for its remarkable biodiversity, the Pantanal region in southern Brazil stands out. From the savannas and woodlands in the north to the vast marshes and winding rivers in the south, the Pantanal is home to concentrations of mammals and birds so extraordinary that it's own a reputation as one of the top wildlife viewing destinations in the Western Hemisphere. For this trip, we present a wildlife safari extravaganza to explore the varied habitats of the vast Pantanal ecosystem, seeking the many special mammals, birds, and reptiles that lend the area its fame. In particular, this region has become the single greatest location for viewing jaguars, with most visitors experiencing multiple sightings of South America's greatest predator. Lying in the seasonally flooded basin of the Paraguay River, the vast lowlands of the Pantanal are home to countless numbers of water birds, raptors, and other wildlife that is reminiscent of the great wildlife spectacles of Africa. Thank you all for watching this naturally rich presentation. We are honored to have with us today, Victor Emanuel, founder and CEO of Victor Emanuel Nature Tours, and Barry Lyon, Chief Operating Officer. Welcome, Victor and Barry. And of course, our special guest, Dr. Charles Munn. Welcome, Charles. Charles has transformed and continues to expand the modern story of conservation biology, environmentalism, and ecotourism across the globe. Through his company, South Wild, Dr. Munn has operated vents tours to the Brazilian Pantanal and Amazonia for the last 20 years. Now we will turn to Charles to hear about his story, the significance of the Pantanal, and then two short, exciting videos. Afterwards, Victor and Barry will begin our feature presentation on Vince Brazil Pantanal Safari and Southern Amazonia. In the spring of 1964, when I was nine, my stepbrother, Bill Eaton, and his friends, the Kaysner brothers, yes, those Kaysners, got me hooked on birds in the forests near Baltimore. By 12, I knew all the eastern birds by sight and sound and lectured about birds to local garden clubs. In my last year at Princeton, my professor, John Terborg, invited me to Manu, Peru, to study mixed species bird flocks. That then turned into three and a half years of field work over seven years, all the while living in a tiny backpacker tent. During that time, I studied all 32 mixed species bird flocks found in 350 acres of tall forest. After that, I switched to macaw research, park creation, better rainforest ecotourism, and finally, I developed the world's first successful guaranteed viewing of jaguars, mountain lions, spectacled bears, giant anteaters, and harpy eagles. Now I'd like to explain the significance of the Pantanal. The Pantanal is the largest freshwater wetland in the world. At half the size of California, it is 10 times the size of the Florida Everglades. It is the number one wildlife destination in the Americas, more impressive even than the Galapagos. There is a seven month dry season and a five month wet season, and wildlife is best seen in the dry season, which is why Vent Pantanal Tours operate then. The Vent Pantanal Tours offer guaranteed views of jaguars, as well as giant otters, giant anteaters, ocelots, hyacinth macaws, jabiru storks, capybaras, five species of kingfishers, four species of ibises, more large bird species than anywhere else on earth, namely 82 species weighing over a pound, and more crocodilians in a few hours than you see in a week in the Everglades. It is also the only place in the world where you can extend for a few days in this case to the Southern Amazon, to be sure to see the biggest flying predator on earth, the harp eagle. The eagles are an hour or less from air conditioned lodging. The extension also features Brazilian tapirs, Hawatsons, 
more large monkeys per day than you can see anywhere else in the Americas, five species of macaws, and the most beautiful river in the entire Amazon, and that's the Juruena. Come see the best wildlife in the Americas in air-conditioned comfort, led by the best guides in the business. There is no time change to fly to Brazil, no visas are required, and the Pantanal has absolutely no malaria. Now we would like to show you two videos lasting only two minutes and one minute. A jaguar in water is actually not as unusual as you think it might be. They are certainly the most aquatic of all the big cats. In central Brazil here, this one is crossing the river looking for prey. It's a big hoss of a male. Definitely an adult. Stalking along the bank. Now, jaguar diet consists of upwards of 85 species, more than 85 species of different animal. They can take virtually any riparian vertebrate found in their habitat. So anything along the rivers and in the rivers, it's a potential prey item. It's on the menu. Walking along the riverbank for a jaguar is like us scanning a buffet line. That great camouflage coat is not doing a whole lot of good for this guy right now, but he's instead depending on more on just stalking technique. He's doing an excellent job stalking. You're not seeing any splashing, even though he's partially in water and probably can't see the bottom, making sure the footing is good. He's on the, on the bank here further on now. And all the way across the river, there are two caiman. That's pretty laser beam focus, if you ask me. Now, I thought from the left here, this was the other caiman that we saw in the water, because there were two in the water before. But no, there's one caiman on the bank, and that's the jaguar. Swimming in. Not a lot in the way of splashes there. This guy's good. One, two, boom! Teeth in. Now, that's got to be in the brain case, or at least disconnecting the central nervous system, because that caiman is no longer struggling. He's no longer fighting. That's a meal that he's taking away to have at his convenience. Emmanuel Nature Tours who have operated more tours to the Pantanal than any other company in the world. And we offer more tours this summer in the peak season than any other company. And we're honored to work with our old and very dear friend, Charlie Munn, who has done such a wonderful job of setting up lodges with excellent local leaders to work with the great mint leaders. I've been all over the world, but I count the Pantanal is one of the 10 best places in the world that I have ever been. I've been five times. I'm looking forward to going back again. There's always more to see and enjoy. Our Pantanal trips are filling up, and I urge you to sign up for one of them. You can see them on our website, and I guarantee you it will be one of the best trips of your lifetime. Okay. Uh, thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Victor. Uh, we are going to have a discussion today about our Pantanal uh, tour program because uh, it is one of our most popular and most successful programs, and for for obvious reason. Uh, when you tuned in today, 
Uh, you were you were treated to a, a, an overview of the Pontanal, some of the wildlife that you might see on a trip to the Pontanal. And it really is, in some ways, it's unparalleled. And we love it. We offer four tours. We've been offering four tours a summer in recent years. And and so what we're going to do is we're going to show you some imagery, uh, birds, wildlife, things you can expect to see uh, on a trip to the Pontanal, and also, of course, the tour route itself to orient you on where exactly you would be going and uh, where you would be staying and places you'd be seeing and so on. I do want to just show you a handful of images here. Some of the some of the stuff that's representative of the big attractions of the of the Pontanal, the world's largest inland aquatic ecosystem, essentially uh, centering on the drainage of the Paraguay River. After uh, after the rainy season, this big giant area, like uh, Dr. Munn said, half the size of the state of California, fills with water, and as it drains out. Uh, over the ensuing dry season, it is a major attractant for wildlife and it has a concentrating effect. And so uh, scenes like this are, are typical, uh, a drying water hole that is, that is uh, teeming with bird life. Here we have jabiroos and a number of egrets, uh, caiman and other wildlife that abound in these sites. And we do center on seeing these and you really, you can't help it because the highway through the Pontanal passes by uh, sites like this. Other things that people long to see and can expect to see, the Agami Heron, Ocelot, Giant Otter, Hyacinth Macaw. Many of our trips see the giant anteater. This is just some of the imagery that we have to offer. Some of the things that, that you can, that one can expect to see and certainly look for on a trip to the Pantanal to whet your appetite. So as we get started here, the first thing that we really wanna do is to orient you on where exactly the Pantanal is. And it is this orange shaded area, this orange colored area here in the Southwestern corner of uh, Brazil. The overwhelming majority of the Pantanal is in Brazil. Pieces of it are in Bolivia and it skirts the Paraguayan border as well. But make no mistake, the Pantanal is primarily in, in Brazil. And the way that, that our tours work, the, what we think is probably the best way of getting there is for uh, people who fly from the United States uh, to the city of Sao Paulo. It can also be done here on the Atlantic coast. It can also be done through Brasilia to the north, but most people do travel through Sao Paulo. An overnight flight, there are day flights, but generally the overnight flight to Sao Paulo, and then the next day uh, taking the, uh, the connecting flight into the interior to the large city of Cuiabá. And uh, Cuiabá is a large metropolis, but it also happens to be, for our intents and purposes, it is the gateway to the northern Pantanal region, which is where we are going to, where we're going to, the focus of most of our talk today. So you fly into Cuiabá, uh, we overnight there, and then the adventure begins. Um, I do have, uh, see, uh, we have another map here. Basically, it, it, it depicts the same area, but the inset here, which you will see more than once through this program, uh, offers spe the specifics, displays the specifics of where we will be going within that shaded area. As you can see by the dotted line, we do fly to Cuiabá from the city of Sao Paulo. Our route takes us to the, the city of the small city of Pocone, which is the gateway community to the Pantanal. From there, we uh, enter something called the Transpontanera, which is the overland highway that goes south through the Pantanal. And that's where the action is until we get all the way down to the river. And we're going to talk all about this. Uh, we spend several nights on the river um, along the way, both before we get to the river and after we stay at the South Wild Pantanal Lodge. Uh, on the river, we use the South Wild Jaguar Flotel and Suites. Again, these are the creations of Dr. Munn. We think that we have the best place. We use the best places. And, and, I, and it, it, this is, I, I say this not as uh, in any way as a way of bragging, 
but we just think that this is how it is. There are a number of uh, there are a number of uh, our competitors that offer trips to the Pontanal, but we think in terms of the location of our lodges and the experiences that they give access to, that these are the these are the premier places to stay. Some of the other trips that are operated by the company stay in a hotel at the end of the road. They don't stay on the river. And to me, if you're going to go all the way to the Pantanal, you don't want to miss the opportunity to stay on the river on a lovely, lovely boat and then operate from that boat and not in a hotel. Exactly. Here on the side of this slide, we do have basically the, uh, the vent itinerary laid out in outline form here. Uh, I will discuss it as we go along. Upon arrival in Cuyaba, we do spend that first night and we have a lovely lodge right outside the main part of the city where uh, that offers some really surprisingly wonderful birding before we really get into the meat of the trip. But anyway, uh, we do start by by traveling from Cuyaba to Pocone. And again, the thing about Pocone that's most remarkable is that it is the gateway to the Pantanal. And here it is, we call the famous Transpantanera. It is, it is a highway of sorts, but it is not a major modern superhighway in the more traditional sense. It is a large, basically a large dirt road that goes due south for about 88 miles all the way down to the Cuyaba River. And it was originally designed as a means for providing uh, overland access from the Brazilian interior to Bolivia. Uh, for reasons related to finance, natural obstacles, and so on. It was never completed, never paved. Consequently, it is, it's a boon for wildlife. And uh, we will enter the Transpontineras just south of Pocone, where we will begin seeing wildlife pretty much almost immediately. Uh, Greater Rhea is representative of some of the banner stuff that you can see, and this is always a big deal. Seeing Aria, I've always felt so. Uh, there is so much to see in this region. Showing a couple of slides here that are, are more or less representative of what one can see. Uh, the, the spectacular and dramatic Jabiru. This is essentially a guaranteed thing. This is always high on people's lists, as is the incomparable hyacinth macaw. Certainly one of the most beautiful parrots in the world and the largest of the macaw species. Uh, the, the, the northern Pantanal region in particular is, uh, is a stronghold for this species. And we always uh, make an effort to see it and we never miss. Cayman, for, for many of our viewers, seeing birds is of course highest priority, but make no mistake that other mega wildlife, you know, jaguars, anteaters, giant otters, uh, Cayman and so on. This is all part of the Pantanal experience. And one thing that I would, uh, pause myself just to, to emphasize is that a trip to the Pantanal certainly offers an amazing birding experience, but really it should be thought of as an all around natural history experience because it is a land of spectacles and seeing these birds, seeing these mammals, seeing these large reptiles, it all just adds up for the really sort of a, a, a stellar experience in natural history. And by the way, the images that you are seeing here in, in, these, uh, in this presentation today, the majority of these were taken by our tour leaders as well as some of our participants. And so, you know, this is, this is not something that is, that is a um, re, you know, refined photography from, uh, you know, some album that we had to pay for or whatever. This is real stuff coming right from our tours. As we make our way into the Pantanal, the, the, the base of, our, of much of our operation is the South Wild Pantanal Lodge. It is a ranch uh, acquired by Dr. Munn some years ago. It's situated on a small river called the Pishaim. The river itself, as well as the surrounding dry forest and savanna community, teams with wildlife. It is not uncommon uh, for our groups to see 100 species of birds in a day, sometimes in a single morning. Uh, there are trails into the forest. There are bird feeders. Uh, the river is nearby. Uh, it's really just sort of a blitzkrieg of birds, and it's just absolutely wonderful. The South Wild Pantanal Lodge is approximately, give or take, halfway down the length of the, of the Transpantanera between Pocone and the river. 
And here again, some of these spectacle type things that you will see, Toco Tucans just right outside the breakfast room, uh, purplish jays teeming through the teeming on in the trees and on the on the bird feeders. Yellow billed cardinals, saffron finches. In the nearby forest, one of the premier birds that we seek is the spectacular helmeted mannequin, which is just this gorgeous black fronted nunbird, great ant shrike. Chaco chachalacas, blue-throated piping guans. And what I want to point out here is that with this slide is that it isn't just simply pointing out a, a particular bird. Seeing birds like this and in these numbers, it is indicative of, a, of, a habit, of habitats of an ecosystem that is in good shape. Birds like this are typically hunted when the forest starts getting cut. They are among the first to disappear in places. But here in the Pantanal, you can see things like this with relative ease, I might add. We have a full day here, uh, which includes our, our boat trips on the small Pishaim River. Uh, seeing an Agami heron is always a, a big deal. It's one of the most beautiful herons in the world, obviously. Sun grebe, sun bittern. Look at that dazzling bird, wings outstretched. It's a gorgeous thing. Some of our trips even see the, the very difficult to see, very secretive zigzag heron, uh, which we often see right around, well, we, when we do see it, it's right around nightfall. Uh, this is a, a the, the image on the right is kind of a fun image. This is uh, this was a scene, I believe, from last year's tour with David Scanio. Uh, one of our participants actually viewing the zigzag heron through the spotting scope. Occasionally tapers are seen. This is an image that was taken right on the South Wild Pantanal property. Uh, and uh, the tapers come in out of the surrounding forest sometimes. Uh, this is not guaranteed, but it is certainly possible. Ocelot, we have a <laughs> difficult to describe in a way because it's so extraordinary, but you have a very high chance of seeing an ocelot. Dr. Munn and his team there have figured out the habits and movements of uh, the animals in the Pantanal, uh, especially in the vicinity of his lodge. Many of our guests are treated to sightings such as this one. Animals that perhaps you thought you'd never see, you can indeed. Here's another image of an ocelot, beautiful spotted cat. And the, uh, this, was, this shot was taken at nighttime in back of the lodge. From the South Wild Pantanal, we continue down to the river, the Cuyaba River. You can see that we have uh, circled the location, the next location of our stay on the river there, the South Wild Jaguar Flotel and Suites. And I'm going to expand a little bit here on some comments that Victor made just a couple of minutes ago here. Looking at the map, you will see that the road ends at a little village or at a community called demarcated here as Porto Jaffre. And it is a small place. There is a fishing hotel. There is a lodge there where fishermen primarily stay. Most companies that, uh, that, that bring birders and other nature enthusiasts to the Pantanal stay at that fishing lodge there in Porto Jaffre. Charlie, his colleagues uh, and partners have got together and uh, dreamed up an experience which they turned into a reality, which is a floating hotel on the Cuyaba River. This is where our groups stay. This is where our tours go. Uh, Victor and I have both been there uh, a couple of times. It is the premier way, the single best way to experience the river ecosystem and its wildlife. When you get up in the morning, you're surrounded by habitat. You're in the middle of a habitat and you have close access to birds and of course the river, which is where we do our prime jaguar searching and viewing. Of course, the hyacinth macaw um, is a big deal. We can never show too many photos of that bird. And so, uh, you know, uh, we have some excellent places to, to seek this species. 
other birds in the area, yellow chevron parakeet, Nande parakeet. I'm being a bit general in the sense that some of these species are seen around the river, but others throughout the, the northern Pantanal region. Pale crested woodpecker. The orange back trupial. These are birds that are around the South Wild Pontanal Lodge. Again, they are also in other parts. Other we see them in other areas of the Pontanal. A couple of woodpecker species are possible in the Pontanal: the compo flicker, the white-headed woodpecker. These birds are seen. Uh, you know, and and I want to emphasize here that when you are in the Pontanal, a number of birds are seen widely through the region. Whether you're on the river, whether you're in at South Wild Pontanal Lodge, whether you are at the top of the Transpontanera, some of these species are widespread birds, others much more localized. And when we start down the Transpontanera, the area of the uh, south of Pocone and at the north end of the Transpontanera are a little higher and drier um, whereas it's much more marshy and aquatic toward the south end. A lot of these birds are right out in the open and easy to see. I love forest birding too, but sometimes the birds in the forest are hard to see in among the leaves, but in the Pantanal birds are often right out in the open. The Southern Screamer, the large, uh, bizarre looking Southern Screamer is a bird of the, of the river country, the riverine lowlands. Black cap Donacobius, um, wonderful, charismatic, beautiful bird. Many of our tours uh, do see the stately Maguari stork. Uh, this is a species that moves around quite a bit with the uh, with the rising and falling uh, the receipt the receding uh, waters during the dry season. Rufescent tiger heron, boat billed heron. Waddle Jacana, Brazilian teal. Toward the southern end of the Transpontanera, a bird that we make a point of looking for is the spectacular scarlet-headed blackbird. Um, just a gorgeous thing that uh, shines like a beacon when you see one sitting out among the cattails in the marshlands uh, just north of the Cuyaba River. I do want to, again, uh, orient you on um, this section of the program where we are in the South Wild Jaguar Flotel and Suites. Uh, we spend four nights here on the river. This is what it looks like. These are floating barges that are basically moored along the side of the river. The upper right, you can see this boat, this little boat that's tied up alongside the the flotel there. It is, in, it, it, we have, we use uh, small boats and we, you know, our, our groups get in the boats and we go up and down the river, birding and looking for all the special wildlife, jaguars, giant otters, and so on. The structure on the left that's in the near ground of this image are the jaguar suites, large rooms, big windows, comfortable, spacious accommodation. This is what they look like. Quite inviting, I might add, very tastefully uh, designed and styled, uh, well appointed. It's really a beautiful experience. Morning on the river, can't beat that. Now, uh, what we are looking at here is an outline of the region on the river what, that, that is referred to as Jaguar land. And what this is, this is an area where going up and down these rivers in these boats, you are able to seek and find jaguars. And what we want to emphasize is how can this possibly be that an animal that is basically one of legend and lore, how can we possibly be seeing, having these incredible experiences with these animals? Up until Dr. Munn and South Wild developed this area for jaguar viewing, the jaguar was an animal that you saw that you 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 might have a chance of seeing. You were lucky. Certain places where you might glimpse one, see one run across a road, see one uh, briefly on an exposed log in a river, um, and then it's gone. 
one of the things that 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 Dr. Munn has done that has really in his approach to conservation and make no mistake he is a conservationist and it is one of the is one of several important reasons that we have that we are so appreciative of the relationship that we have with him is that he has emphasized conservation through ecotourism Sh show people where these animals are make them accessible and that is, uh, and that underpins our, our collective desire to save these things and preserve their habitat. Porto Joffre here in the lower corner of the map. Again, this is where the Transpontanera ends. It is where we get on the river. This, what you're looking at here is a network of waterways outlined in yellow, which is the prime area where we go to look for jaguars. And these animals are habituated uh, they're they're part of what is called it's it's sort of a result of what's called the Brazilian miracle, where some time ago um, in many parts of Brazil people stopped hunting the wildlife, and as a result, with the fish, this place is popular among fishermen. Uh, that combined with the abundance of habitat, the abundance of of wildlife prey items, and so on, these jaguars are reasonably numerous and they have become accustomed to people, um, habituated, you might say, in which the sight of a human being, the sight of a boat does not cause these animals to immediately flee. So consequently, we are able to have encounters with these animals that you might even call astonishing. This is kind of a fun slide. This is a dossier of images that Southwild compiled. It's when jaguars are seen, they're photographed. And they are they are they are documented, and so the, the spotting on their coats, particularly around their face and so on, allow the the researchers, the people who study these things, to be able to identify them as individual animals. Oftentimes, uh, vent tour groups will encounter a jaguar that is not previously known, and that's kind of fun too. Here is an image to give you an idea of what to expect when you're on. Uh, one of the boats just cruising up and down. Here is a scene of what a jaguar encounter can look like. Uh, you're cruising on the boat and somebody will see one. And they're often resting up in the shade under overhanging vines and branches. Sometimes jaguars are seen actually swimming in the river, walking along the riverbank as we saw in, uh, in the video, sometimes they are seen actively hunting. We never know how we're going to see a jaguar, but we do know that the chances are, are high. Look at this shot in by Eric Brunke, an amazing image of a jaguar looking at you from close range. Through the years, we have had numbers of tour leaders involved in our Pantanal program, names that will be very familiar to a lot of our viewers, Andrew Whitaker, Kevin Zimmer, David Escanio, Jerry Langham, Eric Brunke, all of our leaders are coming home with images like this and the preceding ones, not to mention those captured by our travelers. Look at a big spectacular jaguar. Broad daylight. And this, yeah, this is not something that goes on at two or three o'clock in the morning. This is broad daylight. It can happen any time of the day. Close encounters with the Cayman, the Yakari Cayman. Jaguars are resident throughout the Neotropics, but nowhere are they bigger than here in the Pantanal. They're actually considerably larger than the, their Amazonian counterparts. And one reason for that is that uh, there is so much prey, there are so many prey items, and it might uh, surprise you to know that these Cayman comprise a major part of their diet. Of course, there's other things like the capybara, world's largest rodent. That's always kind of fun to see them in their family groups. Uh, other birds that you might see on the river, the great black hawk, black collared hawk, snail kite, a white tailed hawk. This is a young bird, a crane hawk, long winged harrier, wonderful place for hawks. That's for sure. Roadside hawk. Uh, crested caracara. 
yet another element. There are so many faces to the uh, the Pantanal ecosystem. Another is river islands, where you can see things like black skimmers nesting. Nakunda nighthawk. We often see them uh, towards sundown, but sometimes uh, our our trips, uh, our, our visitors are lucky enough to encounter them by day. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, that image on the left, the white body and wing linings and so on. One of my personal favorites, actually. Nakunda nighthawk. Great potu. Long-nosed bats. Amazon kingfisher, capped heron, beautiful capped heron. And of course, right up there with the jaguar, uh, there's always a lot of interest in seeing giant otters. World's largest otter, uh, they tend to move around in family groups, spectacular things, uh, spectacular in appearance. Being out there in the boats on the river and listening to these things roaring at each other uh, in their sort of endless search for prey items, armored catfish and other things. Uh, it's kind of a wondrous experience, really. And sometimes you see these on the same day as you see jaguars. Here's a family group. This is another photo by uh, Eric Brunke. After our time on the river, we start back up the, up the Transpontanera as we begin making our way out, but uh, not so fast. We, uh, the trip is not over by a long shot. Um, and rather than go racing all the way back up toward Cuyaba, we, uh, we get off the river and returned to the South Wild Pantanal Lodge where we spend another night. Uh, sometimes, um, in addition to all the wildlife, uh, this, uh, our, our tours are treated to uh, blossoming trees. Um, this is an example of some of the things that we see, these beautiful flowering ipa trees. Here's an aerial view of what it looks like. Quite beautiful. There's the lodge in the lower, in the, the left foreground, right along the Pishaim River and all this uh, savanna country around it. Birds like the Chotoy spine tail, you know, no, no any one or two days around the South Wild Pantanal Lodge is going to net you all the birds that are possible. And so a return visit opens the window to different birds. Chestnut bellied guan, and when you go to the South Wild Pantanal Lodge, seeing a, jab, a jabiru is assured. However, to take it a step farther to really <laughs> give you the, the most enhanced experience we can, Dr. Munn has built an elevated platform that you can reach by a short spiral staircase that takes you up right where your eye level with a known nest site that these jabiru's used year after year. And so uh, you can look out directly on these things. So rather than staring up into the, peering up into the height of a tall tree, you are at eye level with a Jabiru family. Lots of fun. Jabiru eating piranha. Roseate spoonbill, another bird that you might see there. Plumbius ibis. Buff-necked ibis, green ibis. At some point, though, we do say goodbye to South Wild Pantanal, and we begin working our way farther north. Just this side of Pocone is Cusada Piuval. And this is a, this is a lodge, a hotel, that is at the very north end of the Transpontanera and is a mid this higher, drier Pantanal ecosystem where you have more grasses, uh, larger trees, plenty of water too, depending on the, the, the year and the season. And of course, uh, a two night stay here is so vital because we see lots of other things. The red-legged Seriema, another premier bird of the region, just a spectacular thing. We see them striding through the grass. 
blue crown parakeets, white fronted woodpecker, crab eating fox. This is something that we sometimes see. <clears throat> we often do a night drive, typically do as a matter of fact, and this is an animal that you uh, have a realistic chance of seeing, a very realistic chance of seeing, high probability in fact. Beautiful owl here. Greater Rhea. Again, once you enter the enter the Pantanal or the Transpontanera, this is a, a bird that is seen frequently at the upper end and middle stretches of the of the Transpontanera. By the time we get to P Pusada Piuval, we will have probably seen them, but this is another great spot for them. Here's a female with chicks. The beautiful yellow collared macaw. We actually have a chance to see a couple of macaw species on this trip. The hyacinth macaw tends to get the most, draw the most attention for good reason, but this is just a dandy of a bird. And as you can see, we sometimes see them perched like this. This shot was taken on one of our tours. Oplomato falcon. Pusada uh, Piuval is also one of the better locations in the in the northern region of the Pantanal to see giant anteater. Right up there with jaguars and giant otters. This is a an ocelot now. Uh, this is a highly sought, highly desired animal for people to see. The giant anteater. You know, many of our tours do see them. There we go. Wonderful animal. They like those grasslands and with the big termite mounds. Uh, Red-crested cardinal. This is a gorgeous bird that we see. The slaty ant shrike, Planalto slaty ant shrike. Saffron-billed sparrow. What we do day 13 of our tour, as, we, as we're getting near the end now, we leave Pusada Piuval and we return to the city of Cuyaba. Until recently, we would the plan was we would leave Pusada Piuval in the morning and fairly early get to Cuyaba in time for outgoing flights. But we felt that it was too rushed. And so what we have done is we have added a final night in Cuyaba so that it gives us additional time in the morning at Pusada Piuval for another round of birding and exploration. Um, and we're not rushed to get back to Cuyaba. At that point, uh, we do spend a final night there. People then either start the journey home or we offer an extension, which I am going to detail uh, in greater depth here momentarily. But looking ahead to this summer and next summer, 2023 and 24, what you're seeing here is a listing of our Pantanal Safari tours. We have got tours with four different leaders, Jerry Langham, Kevin Zimmer, Eric Brunke, and David Escanio in that order. Our Pantanal tours operate from mid-July through mid-September. Each time during that period is a snapshot in time. And no two snapshots are exactly alike. Uh, the water levels tend to be a little higher earlier. Uh, it tends to be a little drier later. But these are these in some ways are minor things. Um, each of our trips offers fantastic experiences. And oftentimes it just comes down to personal preference in terms of when you uh, are able and willing to be away from home. Uh, can't recommend these tours highly enough. They're just they're, they're just fantastic. In 2024, we have also got the same lineup of Pantanal trips, but on top of that, we now are also opening up the Southern Pantanal. Again, the trip that we just described uh, covers the North end of the Pantanal, but thanks to Dr. Munn, he and South Wild have, are, are, are now uh, bringing guests to the Southern Pantanal. And Victor and I were in the Southern Pantanal in September last year um, with a private group. 
And we liked it so much that we are going to be offering our first Southern Pontinal Birding and Wildlife Spectacular in August of 2024. That trip will be led by longtime leader Steve Hilty. And um, the differences between the Northern Pontinal and the Southern Pontinal, what I would, what I would say is that uh, there is a, lo a lot of overlap. Um, what you see in one, you see in the other. But each region has got its own unique things. Uh, the South in particular uh, is, is uh, especially productive for giant anteater, among other things. So it's really uh, the choice is yours. The experiences are equally amazing in either place. Now, for people who are going all the way to Brazil uh, and people who want to optimize their time there, uh, you can take advantage of our optional pre and post trip extensions. A number of our trips visit the famous Iguazu Falls. And to get there, uh, the map on the left shows you essentially where you're going. Um, you fly from Sao Paulo to Iguazu Falls and back again. We spend several days seeing the, seeing the falls is paramount, but uh, also there's a whole range of birds that we see on these trips that we do not generally see on our Pantanal tours. And uh, three of our trips this summer with Jerry, Eric, and David uh, do visit Iguazu Falls. Two of our trips at this point in 2024 will visit Iguazu Falls. Really a wonderful contrast, a wonderful complement to our Pantanal tours. At the other end, for those looking to stay a little longer and experiencing another distinctly different ecosystem, a distinctly different set of habitats, we offer our Harpy Eagle and Southern Pontinal extension. I'm going to advance to this slide briefly because I want to show you the map depicted uh, in the image in the, the top right here. And where we go is uh, from the city of Cuiabá, we go north to the town of Alta Floresta. And this is in the Southern Amazon. When you think of the region that we collectively call Amazonia, it is the massive forested basin that occupies a huge part of uh, Northern and Central South America. Alta Floresta, located more toward the Southern rim of the rainforest region. This is, uh, there is a, a, a sizable community there, a city. This is where we fly to. And from there, we go overland to the South Wild Amazon Lodge. The lodge uh, was featured in the uh, in the video. Uh, Dr. Munn talked about it. It is essentially a guaranteed experience. Charles and his colleagues monitor nest sites, and uh, we usually have the opportunity, we always have the opportunity to visit a harpy eagle site somewhere within the region. Just to the east of the South Wild Amazon Lodge, you see the Rio Juruena uh, depicted on the map here. It is just a beautiful, beautiful Blackwater River that runs through the, uh, the heart of the region. In addition to the time you spend in the forest going for harpy eagles, you also have these boat trips on the river, and it's just a really totally wonderful experience. I'm going to back up here a little bit. You can see the tours that we're offering next year. We are offering, well, this year and next year, uh, we have three different departures, one with Jerry, one with Kevin Zimmer, another with David Escanio. Next year so far, uh, we have Jerry and David. Depending on demand, we may well offer uh, yet another uh, departure. I just wanna uh, conclude this section, just sharing kind of a fun little story for us. In the fall of 2019, Victor and I made a trip to the Pantanal uh, to visit with Dr. Munn and also see his lodges. and. Uh, when we were organizing the trip is when he began telling us about his uh, new lodges in the South, his new lodge in the South Wild Amazon. And um, not being as familiar with it as we were with the other places, of course, because it was a whole new concept. We, uh, I don't want to say hesitant is the right word, but we were a little unsure because our time was limited. And he just said, trust me, if you come with me to the, and see the lodge, you're going to see amazing things. And um I can't uh, express enough how, how, how delighted we were that we decided to take him up on his offer because, you know, this is, this is really just representative. Um, 
you know, we did see Harpy Eagle. We did uh, ascend a, a, a canopy tower. We saw all these wonderful birds, including on the lower right, uh, the beautiful and very unusual looking Pompadour Katinga, um, a gorgeous purple and white bird um, in the treetops. Uh, and also just the numbers of macaws uh, in this region is so special. So again, Iguazu Falls, uh, Harpy Eagle, Southern Amazon Extension, just a really amazing way to round out your experiences in Brazil. Let me end by saying only East Africa compares to the Pantanal in terms of spectacular wildlife and a wonderful experience. Don't miss it. Sign up for one of these trips. We want to take this opportunity to thank you for joining us on another uh, webinar production.